Should all my CO2 jets or CO2 tanks be on the same system? My personal recommendation, and of course, our professional recommendation here is no. A number of reasons why. The first one is if something on that system has a problem, it's isolated to a much smaller system. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you have eight jets and you have a nightclub. A couple are on the balconies, a couple are on the stage. What's gonna happen is if you pipe everything together, first and foremost, you're gonna have problems with your system because what happens is anytime CO2 hits a 90 degree turn, it's like adding 50 to 100 feet to a hose, depending on where that angle or where that 90 degree angle is in the line. Now, when you start splitting lines, CO2 flows on the path of least resistance. So yes, in theory, you would like to think it's like an electrical wire that wherever you hook it up, you got juice flowing to it. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case. Path of least resistance, it's always gonna go to the path of least resistance. So if you have two jets and you have a, a T coming in, those lines need to be equal distances apart to get the best flow out of both of them. Otherwise, if it flows into here and then it goes to this one, in theory, and yes, sometimes in practice, depending on many other factors, they will look the same and they will output the same. However, ultimately, this one is gonna pull more on the one side that's closer to the feeder line. So with those, all of that information said, the best thing to do and how we personally do this is taking your entire system in that example of eight jets, we do two to maybe one line and then those are equal distances apart and we pipe that over to where the CO2 tanks are. Then we'll do another two. Those are on a T or they have the same distance away from that T or the splitter and then that feeder line goes back to some tanks. The reason for this and why I didn't talk about this in the video is more so important now that you have an understanding so far of what I said is because if anything happens with the system, you have the ability to isolate that problem. You basically have your entire CO2 system, but it's broken down into individual systems. Like I said in the video with that example, you have eight jets, well you have two and a feeder hose, two and a feeder, two and a feeder. You basically have four of the identical CO2 systems, they just may be placed different areas or have different lengths of hoses. The best part about that is because now you have an isolation set up for safety purposes and if anything happens, let's say one of the valves happens to stick open. Well, now you're only wasting two tanks or however many tanks that are on that one system instead of your entire system going down. In a live event or a, mu a music video shoot or a movie video shoot or something like that, they definitely want that. They wanna be able to still have effect if anything happens. You're mitigating problems by doing this. That's why we recommend it. Could it cost more? Of course, because you're running more hoses. But at the same time, look at the cost to benefit factor. You'd rather be safe than sorry. Hope this explains if all your CO2 jets should be on one system or not. We recommend no. Again, every system's different. Contact us with any questions and we'll be glad to advise you on what we recommend for your specific system. All of them are different. All the uses are different. That's our job. We're professionals at this, trust us. This is CryoFX, thanks for watching.